All ego Ethan Page, no stranger Canadian wrestling fans, specifically Ontario wrestling fans. Uh, I believe you were once booked here at Barry Wrestling, but a flight issue stopped you from actually showing up to the show. Uh, I know that happens quite regularly. Let's start with your uh, impressions, memories, and thoughts on the Ontario wrestling scene. I, Ontario wrestling will always have a special place in my heart. I continue to kind of keep an eye on it and, and to follow certain talents. I still want to see a lot of my buddies succeed and get as far as they can in professional wrestling. I also ran a promotion in Hamilton and Oshawa for 10 plus years. So I, I've had my hand in the Ontario wrestling scene in many ways. I, I still love it. So the fact that AEW is coming to Ontario, I get to wrestle in my hometown is incredible. So we'll talk all about you, of course, but I <clears> wanted to give you an opportunity to name drop some of those friends, give some shout outs to those that Others should have their eye on if they don't already. Shane Saber is doing great stuff. He just is a part of opening a new promotion, I want to say, in the Toronto area called Northern Crown. So they're starting off some shows there. Um, Space Monkey, always been a fan of Space Monkey, which is a great name to just say in an interview in the first place. BMD, Brett Michael David, another guy who's kind of taken to the internet through the pandemic to really grow his fan base on Twitch. He's still wrestling as well. Yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of guys that I still keep an eye on. I just wrestled actually Mark Wheeler in Michigan, which is where I'm living now, uh, the last couple of months ago. So it's good to see that some Canadian talent is still crossing in the border and growing their name. Mark Wheeler, a regular here at Barry Wrestling. I just did a show with him this past weekend. So there is kind of that familia, I don't want to dare say incestuous, but it's it's a small world, pro wrestling. And uh, now you're on the big stage in AEW. Talk a bit about, I, I know that you spent three quarters of the career, you say, on the Ontario scene, but like the learning curve of now national television time segments, how much you've grown as a performer in just that tight environment. Oh, yeah. I mean... Uh, diamonds are made under pressure it's kind of the same thing like they kind of throw you to the wolves and see what happens and I'm a very fast learner I've also had the I'll say privilege other people might take it in a different way but I've had the privilege of this job taking forever to get to this point so I have so many years of experience that are there for me to draw back on and and, and matches that I've had and instances or problems that I, that I've came up that I've had to kind of deal with. So I have a wealth of knowledge and a huge resume before I even came to AEW. So it's kind of prepared me to get thrown into the deep end and see what happens. And I feel like I'm swimming pretty well and I'm excited to see what else is going to come. It's an interesting juxtaposition because there is a lot of talent in the all elite wrestling locker room that haven't had that long path that are only a couple of years in and finding themselves on the national stage. Do you find yourself in a position of giving advice, being kind of a go-to guy behind the scenes for the less experienced guys in the roster? I I'm not going to toot my own horn, but if others want to go nuts, I I'm always there if people want to talk. I'm always there to give advice if I'm asked, but I'm not just walking around tapping people on the shoulder and telling them this is how you should do it because people like that used to piss me off. So uh, I, st I stay away from giving free advice to people that aren't asking, but there's a good group of core guys that, yeah, I would say I'm one person that they would come and chat with about certain things and I'm happy to do it. We're At the end of the day, we're a team and I want to see AEW succeed and I want to see the people that want to learn succeed as well. So a couple of things I want to hit on from that answer and that is to flip the coin. You're currently working with the Hardy boys, Matt and Jeff Hardy, legends in the business. I'm sure you're learning yeah. from a week to week basis. Can you speak on that a little bit about uh, what that experience has been like? Not even just the Hardys. I mean, just look at the roster of people. I could I could at any point I want go talk to Arn Anderson and ask him to watch my matches, watch my promos. A any like Dean Malenko, another great guy, Jerry Lynn, I go to on a regular basis to kind of critique and to get advice and to pick my stuff apart. But literally the fact that I work with the Hardy Boys, I'm surrounded by them. They have infectious energy. And I mean, you've seen me dance like an idiot. It's literally because I can't control it. They're just having a good time. I'm going to have a good time. And to be around selfless talent that has done literally every single thing that it is possible to do in professional wrestling and for them to show me that they're willing to share their successes with me who they probably don't even like is insane it's an insane thing to see and to see how humble they are for the amount of stuff that they've done and then you know you got guys like mjf who are the complete opposite anyways but i i love the fact that those guys are showing me a different way because i'm a hothead and things piss me off 
very easily. And I have to tell myself, oh, I mean, Matt and Jeff Hardy are right here. They're dealing with the same thing and they're fine. Maybe I should shut up. <laughs> so I've learned a lot from those guys and I continue to learn a lot from those guys. I'm, I'm very blessed at the fact that I'm stuck with them. But at the end of the day, I'm still stuck with them. <laughs> well, they might say the same about you. All ego, Ethan Page. The, <laughs> the majority of your career on the national scene, at least, has been as the bad guy. What would no ego, Ethan Page, look like? Is that something that you'd be interested in exploring a little bit further down the road and see what the good guy in you is all about? I know deep down that I'm a good guy, just the way I live my life on a regular basis. But I also know that everybody needs a little bit of ego to be able to kind of walk through life, especially in professional wrestling so i don't know if we'll ever see no ego ethan page but i can use my ego for good and i'm not opposed to that if i find that i have the right support system and people to kind of guide me i'm not against changing my ways yeah i think it might be fun actually well, you hit on a, a common thread that I hear from a lot of AEW talent, and that is wanting AEW to succeed. And you have this uh, upstart kind of reputation, but international pay-per-view coming to Toronto, Forbidden Door, brand new show debuting, Collision. And with the right. roster of talent you guys got, do you see yourself not, maybe at some point not having the chip on your shoulder, not having that underdog, let's make it attitude? When AEW is peaking and the sky's the limit to what that could look like, what's that going to look like for you when maybe you guys are the number one show around? Like, does that attitude of the little engine that could ever go away? For me, no. I mean, I'm like that with every facet of my life and business. Like, if I have a goal that I want to attain, something that's far in the distance, eventually I'm going to get there. I'm not just going to put my feet up. I'm going to change the goal. So I think for me, when it comes to AEW, I don't know that the hunger is never going to leave. Even if we are number one, even if we are smashing it and, you know, 70,000 tickets in the UK and a huge tour in Canada. What else can we do? Where else can we go? How else can we grow? What other countries can we expand to? How many more people can we get to watch the show? I don't think it'll ever end for me. Two more questions for you. And one is with this Canadian tour and the new show and the pay-per-view happening in Ontario, is there a difference between Canadian and American fans other than who they cheer for? Is there like a tangible difference in the crowds when you're on this side of the border? Yeah, I think Canadian fans, they don't get visited as much. So maybe there's a different appreciation for the fact that when these events happen, they're more special. I mean, we go to Chicago a lot. We go to the New York area a lot. So maybe those fans aren't as appreciative of the fact that, you know, we might only come once a year. And I say that about the house rule shows we do as well. They're untelevised events and they're in like B or C market cities. And not often are we going to visit those places. But when we do, the appreciation that they show you can tell by the way that they're cheering, uh, the way that they're reacting. They're just so happy the fact that we stopped by. And I feel like that when we're in Canada, they're so appreciative of the fact that we came through, we showed them love, and we gave them one of the best shows that they're ever going to see. Well, I wanted to wrap this up by playing a new little game that I like to call Turn the Page. And that is, it's kind of like name association, but <laughs> okay. also headline news association. So you can choose to give me your thoughts or turn the page, which is basically saying pass. Oh, okay. Oh, geez. So first of all, describe the room you're in right now and the decor we're seeing with all these collectibles. This is obviously your, your little home away from home. Yeah, this is my office. This is where I do all my video editing for my YouTube channel. It looks like a toy store. It has enough stuff in it that it, it could be a toy store, but it's like kind of a hidden nostalgia on a regular basis to kind of remind me of when I was a kid and, you know, the dream I wanted to chase. And now I'm here. So, yeah, I like being surrounded by this stuff. From my vantage point, what's the one thing you have to keep if everything else had to go? You have to get rid of everything, oh. gun to your head. What's that one thing that you're keeping? From, from here? Yeah. Probably this spider-man head in the corner is there a special story behind that yeah it's a giant piece and when i bought it i bought it because we moved to america i wanted like a centerpiece thing you know like a it's like a trophy that i got myself essentially <laughs> next subject what in the world is going on with all the alien talk ufo uap making headlines what's ethan page's take insane what's my take what do you mean <laughs> i don't even know until you know what i love it all and I, I'm so intrigued by it all. I can't wait to see how it plays out. I feel like life becomes more like a movie every day. So let's see what happens. Is it legitimate or is it a distraction? Does Ethan Page think we're alone in the universe? Well, how could, okay. I feel like it'd be silly for anyone to think that we're alone when we have discovered like a 0% of the universe. So, I mean, come on. You never know.
I'm not going to say it's not true. I'm not going to say it's true. I don't know nothing. Ignorance is bliss. When someone actually shows me proof of something, yeah, okay, I'll believe it. All right. You haven't said turn the page on any of these subjects yet. So final one is Asher Benjamin. What is that? <laughs> hey, he's a he's a hipster, so it's okay if people haven't heard of him yet, but I would be remiss if I didn't throw it out there. It's uh, a certain somebody's character in the wrestling scene here. Oh, oh man. Now I feel terrible. No. Like I said, it fits the the hipster character, and I had to throw one that might got uh, turn the page, so uh, it oh, works out. I w- I already told myself I would not turn the page on anything. I want to give you the best interview possible. So, all ego, Ethan Page. This was a pleasure, and it's going to be a pleasure to see you at all the AEW shows, two in Toronto, two in Hamilton, which I'm sure you're a little looking forward to more so than usual coming home. Thanks for the time to talk all about it. No problem, Ben. Thanks.